Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lena, if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a highly requested video. I get asked almost daily how I edit my Instagram pictures. I'm gonna share with you all the apps that I use, my workflow of how I start from start to finish, of how I edit a picture, and how I plan it out to get like the perfectly aesthetic feed. This video is actually in partnership with Skillshare. I'm so excited to be talking to you about that a little bit later in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to screen record myself editing a picture for you guys that way you guys can see what I'm doing so first I go into my photography folder so this folder has all the apps that I use I really don't use that many apps I try to keep it as simple as possible that way I'm not putting it into like 50 different apps to get the picture that I want so the first thing that I do is I go into Lightroom. So this is the picture that I'm going to be editing with you guys today. This is a picture I took on my iPhone when I was in Dubai a couple of months ago. And I wanted to share with you guys an iPhone picture because I just want you guys to know that you do not have to have like expensive, high tech gear for getting a perfect feed. You can literally use your phone and get really beautiful pictures just with the editing. So um, the first thing that I do when I go into Lightroom is I go into the light section and I go ahead and I brighten up the picture as much as I can. I like to brighten it up as much as I can um, just until it's not like overexposed. So I'll probably bring the exposure up to like 1.5 or so. I also like to bring up the shadows, um, but sometimes if you do that, it does get a little bit overexposed. So I like to take the blacks down. So I'm pretty happy with how the light looks right there. As you can see, it already looks so much better just being brightened, but we're gonna go into the color section now, and I always like my pictures to look really like airy and kind of like a pinky hue to them, so I always warm them up just a little bit, and then I'll add in a little bit of a purpley tint, which makes it look a little bit more pinky. Okay, so here is the fun part. So I go into mix and here you can manipulate specific colors within the picture. So right here, I'm gonna start with red. As you can see, there are red umbrellas in the background of this picture, but there's not really a lot of red on my feed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to desaturate them. As you can see, those umbrellas are disappearing a little bit into the background. Um, reds are a little bit tricky to work with because it works with this picture because I'm turned around, but red is like in your lips, in your skin tone, so desaturating that will probably not work with every single picture, but it does with this one. Then I go into the oranges. I really don't like a lot of orange in my picture. I do like it to look warm, but I try to take like the like bright, bright oranges out of my picture. And what you can also do is you can like take down the luminance of the orange and that can make you look a little bit more tan, which I know you can't see my face or anything in this picture, but that is a little trick that a lot of bloggers use to make themselves look more tan as they take down the orange luminance. So there's a little tip for you. Then I go into the yellow and I love making it look a little bit more pink. So I take down the hue and then I also take down the saturation a little bit because my dress is looking a little bit yellow and I definitely want to take that out of my dress. See. Okay, then I'm going to go into the blue and I'm going to make the blues a little bit more greenish because that's just what I like on my feed. And then I'm also going to take the greens, um, the saturation of the greens down, and I'm also going to make the greens a little bit more warm. A lot more warm. <laughs> I'm going to go back into the light and I'm going to contrast it just to make things pop a little bit more. I always tap it just to see the difference. I always like to just see like how far I've come with this picture. So now that I'm happy with the coloring and everything in Lightroom, I'm gonna go ahead and export it and we'll bring it into the next app. I absolutely love Lightroom because they do have that free mobile app that I was sharing with you. They also have the paid for desktop version, which I do have on my laptop. But you guys, I really only know like the basics of Lightroom. Like what I just showed you is basically all that I know. So that's why I was so excited when Skillshare reached out. Skillshare, if you don't know what they are, they are a online learning community for creators. They have all different kinds of video classes that basically remind me of YouTube videos. They're so easy to watch and they range from everything from like business to photography, videography, cooking even. I mean, they have everything on there. Right now I'm taking the how to edit photos for Instagram video. It talks a little bit about the basics of Lightroom, about the basics of Photoshop. I really, really wanna learn a lot more about Photoshop. So I have like some more classes saved of like more in 
in-depth tutorials on those. Skillshare is kindly giving away a two-month free subscription to the first 500 of my subscribers who click the link in the description box, and that will give you unlimited access for two months, and then it's only $10 a month after that for the yearly subscription. So I would highly recommend you guys getting that two-month trial and just learning about photography or videography or whatever it is that you are interested in and it will really help you reach your goals. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the other apps that I use to edit my pictures and kind of plan out my feed. So um, I don't use Facetune all the time, but just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna share with you the um, tools that I like to use in Facetune. So I probably would not honestly use Facetune for this photo, but just for the sake of the video, let me show you guys which tools I like. So I always like to go into the smooth, and if I have any wrinkles in my clothes, then I always like to kind of smooth it out a little bit. And since my dress is a little bit grainy from brightening it so much in Lightroom, that does kind of help a little bit. I will kind of smooth out my hijab if there's any wrinkles in my hijab. I just like to make the focus on the outfit and not like wrinkles or anything like that. So made like the tiniest difference. <laughs> I didn't really need to use that. Um, I also like going into the details tool and this will really make a difference in helping details pop. So right now I'm using the detail tool on the lace on my dress. As you can see that really made it pop. I'm also going to detail the burge because we also lost some of that detail with the editing. So before and after you guys can see how much of a difference the detail tool really makes. Another thing I like in Facetune sometimes is the patch tool, and if I was like super nitpicky just to kind of share with you guys, it can cover up um, certain objects. This also works with, really well if you have like a pimple or something, so I really do like the patch tool for that. That's definitely my extent to Facetune. I know that some people can get really, really crazy when it comes to Facetune and basically change the whole shape of their face and like what they look like, and that's definitely not what I do. I just use it for little tweaks here and there. So another app that I absolutely love to use to edit my photos is Snapseed. So Snapseed is really good for editing specific portions of a picture. So what I like to do is I like to go to the brush and I like messing with the exposure, temperature, and saturation. I don't even really like using the dodge and burn. I'm not really sure what that is, but um, the first thing I'll do is exposure. So I really want the clouds and the sky to pop a little bit more, so I'm going to bring the exposure down to 0.7 and I'm going to swipe over the sky and a little bit over the bird just to bring out a little bit more detail over there. And as you can see, it just brings out a little bit more detail in the sky. Then I'm gonna go to the brush again and then go to temperature. So this one I don't use too, too often, but I'm just gonna give you, like for an example, if I wanted to, um, if, like if my dress was a little bit more yellowy and I wanted to make it more white, then I would bring the saturation down and swipe over the dress. Um, but my dress looks pretty white from what we did in Lightroom. Um, just to give you an example, I'm gonna bring the saturation down on this building. So I'll just bring it down to uh, minus five. Um, if you had a feed that you really liked, um, no yellow in your feed whatsoever, and you really liked white buildings and lots of grays, then this would be a good, a good tool for you guys to use to kind of just get rid of any of that extra yellow. So as you can see, that got rid of the extra yellow in the building, but um, I really want the yellow in the building for my specific feed. Um, I also like using the saturation tool, so um, you can use this for anything, but in this picture, I think I'm gonna make the water a little bit more um, saturated and make it pop a little bit more, so I'm going to swipe over the water. It's on like the highest saturation, plus 10. Okay, and as you can see, the sky pops a little bit more, the water pops a little bit more from everything that I did in the brush tool. Now I'm gonna go to healing just to give you guys an idea of what you can use in this app. I like going to um, the healing tool and just kind of cleaning up the ground. Um, you can get rid of people with healing. I'm trying to see what else I can fix in this picture. Um, for example, like if you wanted to get rid of these three little things on the building, you could literally get rid of them in like a couple of swipes with the healing tool. So it's literally amazing. I mean, there's no need for me to get rid of that on the building, but just to give you guys an idea of what the healing tool can do, you can get rid of people in the background. It's amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and export this picture and I'm gonna show you guys how I plan my feed and all of that good stuff. Another app that I use that is very, very important is called Preview. And this helps me plan out my Instagram 
feed before it goes live so that way it looks really really balanced and I know that it's going to look very cohesive once everything is posted so I went ahead and I imported the picture that we just edited and you can kind of drag and drop it and play around with it and see where it looks best within your feed. I try not to post two pictures that are really, really similar right next to each other. I try to space them out a little bit so that the feed is very balanced. But And I also like to make sure that the colors work well together. I like to make sure that I didn't make it too overly bright or I didn't make it too warm or too cool or anything like that. I put it in here and if it matches really well then I know I did a good job and if it, I put it in here and it doesn't really match then I'll have to go back into my apps and kind of tweak it a little bit until it matches. So it's just kind of like a back and forth between all the apps all the time but that's just kind of how I do it. So those are all of my Instagram secrets. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks again to Skillshare for partnering with me on this video and don't forget to check out the description box for your two month free trial. I love you guys so much and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.